Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Stellaris Multiplayer with my good buddy, the Trump enthusiast himself, it's Corrin. Hello, Zero. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. It's going to be huge. We're going to make America so great again. I, I know. I, he's, he's building walls and making friends by building golf courses on it's people's gonna homes. It's going to be a beautiful wall. I can't tell you. You're going to love that wall. The aliens love me. The Zeroans love me. The weird chicken aliens love me. They all love me. That, that is a well-known fact. Now, as is tradition, we're going to take a moment to uh, talk you through the geopolitical situation and what's on our plates at the moment. What you will notice is that uh, over the course of the last episode, I was contacted by a bunch of crazy bastards. Uh, you've now got access to my star charts, right? Yes. So you can see who I'm talking about if I talk about the Astani state and the cooperative of Euroglia. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the League of Satrakpur Audrey. Um, yeah, this is not a game if you are. Uh, <laughs> if it's a tongue twister of a game, at the best of times. Precisely, it do, it does do a very good job of making p things feel alien, which I appreciate. Yeah. What we've noticed um, is that we considered ourselves to be not necessarily world leading. We knew we were we were behind the um, Cracksroz Star Principality. But we, we thought we were sort of second and third in overall power, and that is very quickly being shown to not be the case. And actually, um, Current and I are actually growing together in uh, a very, very close alliance, because we are going to be at risk of being eaten alive, actually. Um, we're probably going to squeeze out the Bothrians if we're not careful, although at the moment we both have pretty good relations with them. Um, the Yaks people are great. The the Yaks Colot Combine are really in love with me, actually, but we don't share their affection because they're actually a despotic dictatorship, which is a problem for us. Um, I'm currently uh, looking after a primitive race up here in uh, in this system, and the the big takeaway from the last episode for me was that I captured this area of space here, which opens up the rest of the universe to us. Uh, the only other thing to note from my side is that these guys are very, very aggressive. Uh, the League of Satrakpur Audrey. They are xenophobic isolationists and highly religious, and they've warned us not to approach their borders. I am going to take them at their word because they are stronger than us, uh, as are the Tabran, the Aztani State, and the Crax Ros Star Principality possibly even the Dominion of Glur, but I don't know. The other thing to note is up here, the Cooperative of Euroglia, um, they are almost surrounded entirely by the Aztani state, and I haven't figured out who I like most out of, out of those two uh, empires yet, because this is still an emerging situation. The interesting thing is that that is surely going to come to blows quite quickly. Now, do you want to fill people in from your side, current? In the Trump Empire, uh, we are still trying to find a planet to colonize. We've got a colony ship ready to go. We're surveying the systems, uh, but there is, in a region of about a dozen stars, there's not even one planet viable to colonize. So we're still looking for a, a planet, but we're going to uh, not sit in our laurels, let that area go to an enemy state. So we're going to move in. I've got uh, plus three influence per turn and a military outpost, frontier outpost, uh, costs one influence. So I'm going to spend an influence point to secure uh, this region of stars and then I can build on those, get more resources and then use that as a launching point to try and continue the expansion. So my empire is going east. Go east, young man. Yeah, um, I, <laughs> I am going to uh, unpause the game and... Uh, what else I'm going to talk about is the military situation. You'll see down here we have some damaged cor corvettes. We lost two uh, of our older class of corvettes to these guys. These are medium crystalline entities and they are tough as old boots and they effed us in the A and now we're going to limp back, restock that fleet and uh, come back for another swing at them. Mainly because I want to clear them out and then it's only Suscats more that I have to worry about. Um, 
<clears throat> I believe, although I could be wrong, let's go to the ship designer. Yes, I am now capable of building destroyers. So... Uh -huh. In the Trump <coughs> Empire Zero, we got rid of those crystalline entities because they were illegal. We didn't know if they were rapists or murder <laughs> crystalline entities, but we had to build a wall to get rid of them. Well, it, it turns out it was probably the right thing to do. Um, okay, so this is... Uh, the, I'm going <clears> to <throat> throw some space torpedoes on this destroyer because I can. And a cloud lightning and some blue shard throwers. Down here, I'm going to throw on some shields, which we unlocked. I don't know when that happened, but it did. And what I really need to happen is I need to... Um, I need to unlock a new kind of fission reactor because our reactors are not particularly efficient and it's costing us. I'm quite happy with that design as a as a first destroyer. I, I've gone for balance, so it's got shields and armor. Traditionally, we've always focused just on armor, um, but there are weapons that ignore armor and ignore shields, so it's good to have a combination of both, I suppose. Um, I'm not gone too torpedo heavy. And uh, I will revise this design to include blue lasers once I unlock them because the shard throwers are not fantastic. Um, in fact, what I might do is go for two cloud lightnings and one shard thrower. And there we go, that's the new decimator class. And I am going to get that on order now I've got some minerals and that will be our flagship oh it requires a level 3 spaceport so I have to upgrade my spaceport first uh, yeah that's gonna take a little while okay so that's that's kind of stunted my growth a little bit there but I'm gonna make that investment before I go back out fighting Now, uh, is this done? No. Okay, so we are... We are back to doing research stuff. Very important. Now, uh, do keep me posted, by the way, if you pick up on more worlds that you can colonize. Um, I like I like you've called your navy the Trump Freedom Force. We're spreading freedom uh, around the local uh, systems. That freedom is at the end of a barrel of a weapon, but it's freedom nonetheless. I, I love the design of your ships, by the way. I went for the avian design because I liked that more than the others. The others looked a bit too kind of rudimentary. Yeah, they do, actually. I would agree with you on that. Um, now we've got an active sensor link. You can zoom in on my ships as well, so that's interesting. Um, my deal with the Yaks Combine has ended. So I'm going to um, try and bring that back into play, since they like us. I just saw you uh, warp jump there. Yeah, the Trump Freedom Force is going to uh, settle the score with the people who murdered Catherine Jane. That's the right thing to do. It's a very complicated story background in my in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I like that you've 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 given it thought. Now, yeah, that looks good to me. I'll put that as a fifteen-year deal. Hmm. I've got like weird bits of vision on certain certain areas of the the galaxy that I don't know why I can see them, but I can. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes, and please do chip in with anything that's going on for you, because it's probably not that interesting to watch from my side. I'm going to 
put some more. To zoom in on the Trump Freedom Force at the moment. Yeah, which system are you in? Oh, we were in um, Arcturus, but we've just managed to murder the crystalline entities there. And we're gonna oh yeah, I, I see the I see the wreckage. I see the wreckage. I must say it's a glorious thing. And f when you're looking uh, on the galactic map, just at that region, that whole swathe of stars, there's no empire there. So I'm going to move in with a military base, but there's not even one planet for me to colonize in all that region, which is pretty annoying. But the, presumably there's, there's resources and, and there stuff, right? There will be resources, right? yeah. Um, okay, well, I'm going to get back to doing diplomacy for a minute. Uh, the cooperative of Euroglia like us, as do the Astani state. The cooperative of Yoglu is a theocratic republic, and the Astani state is a plutocratic oligarchy. Now let's take a look at military power up and down the... That's interesting. We are equivalent with most people, actually. That That is interesting. Um, the people... Who the only people more powerful than us are the Astani state and the cooperative of, U of Urogula are actually inferior to us. That is interesting. Let's see what other trade deals we can get here. Hmm. Can I don't I don't really know what I want to offer them to be quite frank. I still love as well that one of my planetary governors is called Roy Carpenter. <laughs> Roy Carpenter. So, Born and bred <laughs> in, uh, in Lancashire. In the Zeroan state, apparently. Um Okay. I like as well you get a rundown of everyone's diplomatic state. Um, the Astani have a migration deal with the Euroglia. So they're not actually going to go to war in the way I thought they might. Um... Just because there is such a deficit of colo uh, col colonizable planets around me. I'm going to have to go in with more uh, science ships, I think, just to explore a bit more. But I need to get that station up and running as well. I'm not going to guarantee uh, their independence simply because I cannot take on the Astani state if that happens. But we are starting to get stuff done diplomatically, and I think that's going to represent a bit of a turning point for us. Um, we have some... Oh wow, he's far too powerful. Uh, we need both our fleets to make that happen. So we, w we won't. What I'm going to do now, actually, is upgrade my starport at Zoroa. And, and that way my shipyards can begin pumping out destroyers, I hope. Uh, yep, looking good. And I'm going to start putting spaceports around some of my other colonies. In fact, let's do a quick colony check. Make sure everyone's got armies going on. Uh, make sure I'm building everything that I need to build. Because I realise I'm not building a lot of stuff on the on the ground. And I'm pretty mm. sure that's going to cost me. How many people do I have here? Oh, I don't even know. How's my research going? Hmm, now, this is interesting. I can get energy storage capacity... Power plant level 2, uh, administrative AI, research speed plus 5%, and a power hub for global energy management. They all cost the same. I'm going to get research speed plus 5%, because surely that makes sense, right? That everything that comes after, you research 5% faster. 
I'm almost done with uh, adaptive bureaucracy, which should give us the ability to hire some more leaders, because that's uh, going to get pretty serious. I'm neglecting my home politics as well, which is going to start upsetting people, so I need to... Uh, I need to start dealing with that. The faction's dead. Um, hmm. Yeah, people are starting to get a little bit unhappy. I see. Research complete. Um, I've got an ethical uh, sort of problem presented itself here, which is an alien tomb filled with uh, data, and the science officer wants to get permission to either um, resurrect the info by desecrating the tomb. Uh, so the choices are or not. So it's let dead aliens lie or download all the information anyway. And you know, they're dead. They're, they don't need that. Help. Yeah, exactly. They don't mind. They're, they're dead. They don't mind. Probably. All my scientists are dying. It's really irritating. How are your scientists? Oh, you. Because everyone gets old, don't they? Yeah. What kind of. Um... Did you go for longevity in the beginning? As well? <clears throat> no, but I now, I'm now starting to wish that I had. Because also a lot of my planets don't have governors and that's a problem. Uh, right. Construction hmm. complete. I'm also aware of having a starving population again, because I neglected that last time. In fact, it's already happening. It's happening on Anvil. I'm just currently upgrading my food production. Requires planetary administration on planet. These are planet specific edicts. Um, is that something I can do? No, apparently not. Man, th 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 my empire is getting too big to to command effectively. <laughs> but did you know you can um, you can create sectors? Yes. Now, as far as I understand, sectors kind of uh, become autonomous regions, so you don't really have to micromanage every single aspect of tile development. Let's say. Well, I suppose it's a good thing, right? If you absorb another another race. And you can just make them semi-autonomous, and that keeps them reasonably happy. Right, I'm being distracted all the time, and I need to get on top of that. Uh, where's my construction ship? Move we here. found a planet to colonize. Finally. Surely not. Oh, wow, wow. I, I found something that generates eight... A energy on two planets that generate four. Right, I'm taking this. I'm taking it. Just completed destroyer research as well, so I'm going to start manufacturing a couple of destroyers. You have to upgrade your spaceport first. That's right. I have to <laughs> research that now. <clears throat> Orbital hydroponic farms, orbital observatory. Why can't I? Oh, I don't have enough minerals. That's why. Okay, I'll I'll be patient. I'll wait for more minerals. Um. Yeah, I have a planet. It's got a real problem. And I don't know how to fix it. Starvation. Uh. Uh, negative balance, inactive buildings, leader has died, one of my admirals. 
Man, I am just being batted from place to place. Right. Head back here. Need a new leader. Let's recruit one who is tough. Sensor range plus 25%. Evasion plus 10%. Leader recruitment cost minus 33%. Yeah, we'll take that. Why not? Right. Now can I order a destroyer? Nearly. <laughs> Nearly. So I'll take a look at my other worlds. See what's going on there. What level spaceport does it have to be to manufacture destroyers? Three. Okay, that's alright then. I'll be able to get destroyers on the go in uh, 170 days. Also, an, uh, an advantageous thing is when you're looking at your spaceport, uh, on the top bit where next to details there's rows of slots where you can put in modules. Shoving in some solar panels there is really good for, um, you know, just a bit of uh, relief on your energy uh, credit supply. I shall bear that in mind. How are you for minerals, me old China? Uh, good. We've got 43 plus per month, and I've got a bit of a good supply, so I can hand over some minerals if you need. I might, but bear with me. I'm, I'm trying to talk myself into making an investment. Um that will pay back later, you know. So I'm delaying my destroyer in order to sort my economy and food supplies out. I've also got quite a bit of Bethrian stone in my empire. Um, the world I'm about to colonise has another, and I've got two lots of it, I think, in my current empire. And a Bethrian, uh, it's like a special resource where you can use it to generate, I think, six credits from a, uh, um, a power plant, basically. That's why I was trying to trade with you for it in the past. Uh -huh. I've got to keep remembering to put my science ships down. So there's quite a lot of micromanagement in this. I mean, it, it's good because it keeps you busy. It means you're, you're doing something worthwhile. I um, am surprised there wasn't an automatic button on the science vessels just to say automatically scout and survey. Yeah, yeah, that is true, actually. I never thought of that, but you are completely correct. Um, There is a... Void cloud up in one of these systems again, so I will deal with that. Right, have you guys repaired? Yes, you have. Can I now build this destroyer? Nearly. Very, very nearly. Orbital hydroponic farms, orbital observatory for extra 10% science in all the sciences. That's interesting. Is my planet starving? No. Research complete. But it's not particularly well developed Some either. May cause adjacency effects to other buildings in neighboring tiles. Let us take yeah, I need to start investing in infrastructure more. That just is true. It just is the case. <laughs> We're just colonizing my new planet. Which is going to be, uh, which is called Congo. <laughs> it is a tropical planet. Oh, that's right. You've got a tropical preference inherently, right? Yeah. We're going to change Congo to be. New. 
Mexico. And it's going to be a very industrious little uh, vassal state of the Trump Empire. Man, no one will trade minerals with me. They do not like giving me the minerals. But I've just realised that I've been, like an idiot, running my uh, empire really, really badly. <laughs> ah, awesome, my research is finished. Atmospheric filtering for plus 5% habitability. Resettlement cost down 10% or clear tile blockers. That is interesting. I'm going to go for a reduce to resettlement cost. And in physics, I can unlock physics lab 1, colony development speed plus 25%, and specialized combat computers. Combat computers. That's the only thing I haven't upgraded. Construction complete. Man, my fleets are getting their asses handed to them. I tell you, Zero, have a look over at my territory. The Trump Freedom Fleet is just careering to the eastern edge of the galaxy. There's <laughs> nobody out here. Yeah, I, I can see you've got you've got a lot of you you've got the capability to be incredibly powerful. I think. Yeah, it, well, it, I'm going to try get another colony ship and another planet out here, so I can just slowly sort of absorb this whole goddamn region. It's all going to be covered in brass and gold, and we're going to have golf courses everywhere. <laughs> Classy stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a big void cloud. That's why I'm having trouble with it. Oh wow! You can right-click on stuff to escort it. That's oh, a nice feature as well. That is good. So when someone's snooping around your space, you can sort of shadow them automatically. That is mm -hmm. clever. I, mean, I really want this destroyer, but I am short by 86.93 minerals. Fly request over. I can give you a, few, a couple of hundred minerals, in fact. Are you sure it's not going to set you back too much? No, the mineral supply of my empire is pretty good, really. Uh, how are you for credits? Um, got quite a bit, but can always use more credits. We have detected the presence of a pre-space civilization. Oh, I'll be all over that. How is your empire on propensity to slavery? My guys hate slavery. Same. So think of that, everybody who bashes Donald Trump. His, he hates slavery. Or at least in this, you know, virtual AI driven world of <laughs> spacefaring civilizations his ancestors do. Well, I must say, I did expect you to go for slavery. I think we probably could be in a better position than we are now if we allowed slavery. But it's just, I didn't want the, the risk of internal instability, you, you know? And you know, if you get a, uh, there is an opportunity in the game to get robots, and they can rebel, and they make your population uh, pretty unproductive, surprisingly. Well, yeah, because it, it makes them lazy, doesn't it? Well, like, the robots, I think, themselves aren't as productive as a normal pop on a tile. Speaking of pops on a tile, and do more building, I think. Debris analyzed. How's the planet doing? We actually have a food surplus now, which is good. That makes me feel a bit better. I'm still not using any edicts because I'm aware of how uh, fragile everything is on that front. Um, construction. There was some construction I wanted to get done. 
Ah, yeah, that's right. Ah, but that f that fucks me up. Man, this is hard. It's hard to make some decisions. It is. I've just gone for um, in my society research uh, the galactic administration, so I can get more influence. So then I can set up if I wanted another frontier post. It's because there seems to be just such a deficit of colonizable planets for me, those frontier posts are going to become pretty important in securing my borders. The Trump Freedom Force is flying out of the galaxy as we know it, and it hasn't found anyone. <laughs> Um, I'm still short of a scientist. Can I hire another one, please? Ah, that is a good point. I need to elect some governors. Oh yeah, yeah, that is true. I need to, I need to do the same. Evading hostile fleet. Man, this is so testing. I I feel good though. I feel like I'm I'm stretching my my brain matter. Yes, uh, um, it is. It's not an easy game to just advance in. Oh, awesome! My destroyer completed. There is quite a lot, and there is also quite a lot to remember. Like, I just thought then, oh, I've got to go back now, see how my uh, spaceport upgrade has completed. That's done now. Get a destroyer on the queue. Go check the tiles. Upgrade the building. So there's plenty to do, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. Now, uh, could you take a second talk us through how your geopolitical situation is going? Because obviously we don't see every time you get offers and people approaching you. The Bothrians want to uh, be my bitch. They just can't get enough of uh, trying to send me a last <laughs> proposal. Uh, the, they do look like they're getting squeezed a bit on the map, on the star chart. Um, I don't really have very much contact with the other races at the moment. Uh, the insectoid race which just check what they look like the yaks kalok uh, they're very friendly to me indeed they they um, just keep sending non-aggression pacts that i just have to sign each time um and i've gotten a few non-aggression packs through so everybody's quite friendly to me at the moment but i think that's because i have not exhibited any kind of uh, interest in their space you know i'm off doing my own thing in this barren wasteland to my right and and ignoring them a bit uh, i'm not sure if there would be any possibility of you say making your way around but um having a look at your geopolitical area you've got a nice clump of stars right uh, between sinistra uh, Gidzarak and Jandus in a little triangle, which you'll be able to claim quite nicely. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly uh, my plan because there's quite a lot of uh, resources there that I need. Something I need to know, and maybe we should look it up, is how to boost our uh, how much you get from influence. Upgrading the planetary capital buildings increases this level, and declaring other empires your rivals boosts influence as well. Mm. Ah, I see. I see. The planetary capital buildings are things like being from planetary basic, um, you know, the basic building you pop down at the beginning, then going to a planetary administration and then upgrading it even further. So then you. I see. I was completely ignoring that as well. Where is my planetary administration? And it costs quite a bit of influence to do. But obviously it's worth it because then you can upgrade uh, your Apparently there's no upgrade available for planetary administration at this time. 
Oh, here we go. The ZDV Vagabond's crew is reporting they found something spectacular on Jarabbas for on the surface lies a trace of an explorative expedition of another civilization left behind are some well-preserved documents and artifacts. The proposed action by Chief Science Officer Sergei Sorokin is to send the text findings to our home over translation. There is also the possibility to sell them to a private investor. Wow, that gives me 570 energy credits and 324 minerals. Oh man, that is, that is actually really tempting to just take, but... Um, I'm going to send it to our home for research. We yeah, aspire to I, I greater endeavor. Well. Just because you kind of, uh, I think inevitably in the game they'll they'll mix it up a bit, but in general, kind of taking the longer uh, route, unless you desperately need the resources, will garner more. I think anyway. Now I'm going to find an area to shove down a military base in this territory. So then I can claim even more planets and stop the Glia from expanding if they ever thought to. We're holding elections, so I have to pick a, a ruler election. Emperor Trump, Kathleen Sharp, <laughs> is a very pedestrian name for somebody who's... Uh, potentially well, considering the rival is Emperor Trump. <laughs> Emperor Trump. I've got to stick with him. He's my vote. He's the vote of freedom lovers everywhere. System survey complete. But I didn't get Emperor Trump. We've got Manon Dubois. Uh, <laughs> oh well, that's that's the wettest Pontius name I've ever heard. And a scientist has just died. Seems to be the way of it these days. Dangerous game science. Right, I'm going to take out these crystalline entities now, I hope, without losing my destroyer. My new sexy flagship. And hopefully without drawing the other crowd in. I built a few extra corvettes as well, but it seemed to mince through my corvettes better than um, other stuff has in the past. Now, there is... Uh, a world here that I should be able to colonize and that means I can expand my territory here as well which is fun probably but I, I realize now that I've got five planets and I can't keep on top of uh, looking after them all very well okay let's see how this works that destroyer does like its torpedoes it seems Not now, autosave. Now... Well, it seems we're holding up better than we did previously, at least, but I think we've got much more overwhelming firepower than we had before. This is my first over 300 power fleet, and we just lost a, a Corvette there, it seems. How's the destroyer doing? Oh, excellent. It's not been hit yet, so that makes me happy. I tell you what, I thought I'd feel more... I thought I'd feel more bothered that I wasn't... Um, that I wasn't in receipt of uh, warp technology, but actually, I don't think it's held me back too much. I think hyperspace works okay for me. I've got regener regenerative hull plating on some of these things, so they heal themselves super slowly. How are you doing on technology? What's what, what's on the books for you? We've got uh, ion disruptors being researched in physics, uh, galactic administration in society, which will give us an extra one influence monthly, uh, and then we've got um, the advanced spaceport in in. Uh, in engineering, under the uh, the watchful eyes of Kathleen Sharp, who didn't win uh, <laughs> as emperor of <laughs> the 
Trump unit. I'm gonna have to see about where Emperor Trump went. Well, obviously he went into a high-paid consultancy role. Definitely. That's what they all do. You're right there. If anybody ever has a look at uh, what happens to presidents and prime ministers after they leave office, they just all go work for consulting firms for energy companies or strategy companies. That Don't is exactly it. Get paid a fortune. Except for Margaret Thatcher. She didn't actually have a plan for what to do when she retired and went nuts. Let me tell you, these crystalline entities are tough as old boots, man. I know. But progress is is being made. My economy stabled out since I I learned how to have colonies, <laughs> how to manage my colonies properly. Yeah, mine are pretty much all fully developed except for the one that I've just created. Slowly getting that done. Our trail deal with you has run out, so I have to make sure to renew that. Actually, I need to I need to perform a refit on my uh, Blue Streak class because I have unlocked a new form of laser. So um. Is that better than a... Yes it is. Okay. That is good news indeed. Do I have more armor yet? No. Construction complete. Oh, I need to... I, I really do need a new reactor. Are you losing on energy? On my ship designs, yeah. On my ship designs, absolutely. Um, and let me tell you, I won't be fielding a great number of uh, destroyers anytime soon. No, oh, Jesus, we've just... Everybody's dropping dead. Kathleen Sharp, no. <laughs> no, no! No, Kathleen Sharp, you were so boring. But she had a glittering political career ahead of her, I'm sure. Uh, she didn't, she was shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a lot of surveying done, at least, which I do find encouraging. And I'm hoping these crystalline entities leave my science ship alone so I can get this research before the time runs out. Um, because that gives me some special projects. Speaking of special projects, I haven't checked that for a while. Where's the situation log gone? There we are, translating explorer's texts. Yeah, why not? Ah, now I've just run into the row aliens who are going to turn out to be some other empire who I think are probably going to be uh, above uh, or to the right of the Astani, so you'll get the info as well. Ah, oh, this is interesting. I can now track void clouds because of my research, like long range. Um, I'm also, I've got an orbital research mandate for my prime minister. 
So in their term of office, they promised to build four research stations and I can get up to 175 influence as a reward, which is good because I can get um, minerals far easier than I can get uh, influence. So I'm actually going to set my construction ship off doing that. Sometimes, man, you just win big. Mm. It's all coming up. Zero Trump. <laughs> I'm actually going to build a new construction ship if I can afford it, which of course I can't. And I can't build a destroyer assembly yards even though I researched it. I wonder if it's because I've got a corvette assembly yard on this module already. Um, Special project complete. Ah, here we go. Uh, let me let me read you an essay. The crystalline entity is the name itself a compromise between rival factions of xenobiologists and xenogeologists on Zoroa are most definitely alive. Some overly conservative members of the Zeroan academic elite argue that they are, are silica animate matter and that they have little in common with biological life. The vast majority of the Zeroan state's populace reject that regressive perspective instead turning their eyes towards the fascinating new horizons that the crystalline entities represent. They are somewhat regrettably solitary beings, each individual crystal sovereign rarely seen with more than one sentinel and one smaller cohort entity. Aside from the cohort and sentinel clearly being subservient to the sovereign of the group, the subtle nuances of the crystalline entity's socio-hierarchical relationships are lost on us, which does not stop these dynamics from being the subject of fevered studies on Zoroa. The entities do not seem to mate, and we have yet to observe any crystals that are recognisably older or younger than others. Contrary to an earlier hypothesis, the shifts in hue between individual crystalline entities seem to be related not to their age but to their latent internal charge which can be violently unleashed and it appears as if those sporadic fluctuations in this charge alter the refractive properties of the crystal man that was hard to read for some reason adds adds the prismatic lenses modifier to your empire yes nice so we now use prismatic lenses suck on that suck on my prismatic lenses <laughs> Fear the science. <laughs> Special project complete. Oh wow, that text I didn't sell? It turns out to be stories and philosophical ponderings. A research station built in orbit Deep, a man. Body. Deep. Uh, is there anything here to research? We, uh, the alien race that um, I was discovering just then is to the right of the Azdani state, who you should see the v Valut Star Polarity. Uh, Go on. And again, they're, they're just miles away, so this whole stretch is pretty open, unfortunately. Oh, oh you, you've just discovered a new. A new empire. The Valurt Star Polarity to the right of the Astanis. Oh, hold on. The Cracks Ross Star Principality has declared war on the Tiburan Imperium. That works. Let's go to the geopolitical oh. overview. That works excellently for, for me, at least, because these two do not like each other. The Tebrans only have three star systems. They might be ripe for a bit of conquest. I'll have to survive this first. Alright. Red crystal capacitors. Disruptors, plasma throwers, or point defense. Hmm. I'll go for point defense because that's the cheapest. I'm staying out of this war, I can tell you that much, because there's nothing for me to gain at all. Um, wow, I'm starting to get quite friendly with some people. The Bothrians are my new best friends, apparently. You know, I thought we would be murdering those 
pigs. I mean, they are literally warthog men, uh, but <laughs> they're, they're quite useful. They, they do seem to be, don't they? And you've just created quite a useful little barrier in that you've just sealed up the gap from stopping the um, Orosian coalition from just peeking through. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's that's what I had to do, man, because otherwise I'd be cut off. I still need to take Rastaban, really, because um, they could block me off from the other side. Potentially. But as long as I keep that corridor between Kornaji and Rastaban open, I'm in a pretty good place. So, it's almost the end of another episode. Do you want to just give us uh, a, a general overview of the, the main points that are happening to you or being happened by you. Yeah, if you swing over to uh, my area on your star chart, I you'll can see... I can see got, you're expanding your territory. We've got... Uh, it's come up as j rope, but uh, if you're able to click on the actual... Uh, yeah, I'm in the system. It is the uh, Trump penal colony. It's officially listed out as New Mexico as its planet. That's actually <laughs> just a penal colony we're sending. Uh, people to make shoes and lawn mowers for us uh, to then use on Trump Prime. And uh, to the right of that, we've got a milit a frontier outpost, which is there to just try and expand the territory a bit more. We will get uh, three star systems off the back of that. I know a lot of people out there hate using frontier outposts because they take their influence, but I've got a good. I've got now even after that one. Uh, plus three influence coming in, and when we get galactic administration research, that'll go up by another one again. And um, then over to the right of that, there's an endless void of nothingness, so I'm hoping that there is uh, a couple of planets in there that I can either learn how to colonize with the right research, or terraform, because I haven't even done any terraforming yet, so see how that works. But currently we've got four planets, three of them are pretty much all um, max uh, developed, and then the last planet, New Mexico, has just been founded. And apart from that, politically, I'm cushy with everyone, that's the technical term for my political situation. And uh, Imperium, just to the north, is going to... I may... Depending on how the uh, their their war goes, if they lose, then I might swoop take a planet off the. I'd have to build up an army. But apart from that, it's just going well. Money's flowing in, resources are flowing in. We're expanding to the right. We're not enemies with NMD at the moment, and I'm building up a destroyer fleet in anticipation for a war. Like it. How many destroyers have you got right now? We currently only have three destroyed, but then that's going to uh, grow over time. And they're about they're going to be equipped with different stuff. And I'm just spending money because I've got at the moment 1,400 minerals plus 52 per month. And so, uh, oh, there's another destroyer just been built. So four destroyers, and those four destroyers have 368 firepower, which is not to be sniffed at for just four ships. They can go off and join the front free uh, the Trump Freedom Force, making the galaxy great again. Nice, nice. So I've just um, created another new class of Corvette, the Scythe class. It's not as armored or shielded as I would like, but. It should hopefully um, tip me over the edge in terms of uh, overall firepower. That's the hope, at least. And I have got to still get this fleet back to base so I can heal it up. Well, um, I'll spend a, a quick moment going over what I'm doing. I'm, I'm in the process at the moment of building uh, a bunch of research stations. That's the first time one of my Prime Ministers will have fulfilled their pre-election promises and if I accomplish that I should get a whole payout of um, of influence which is going to help me out big style because I am lacking in that completely I mean I, I'm earning one per turn now because I've got so many frontier outposts to stop me being boxed in uh, I've gained the 
capability, you see these pings on the map. Um, someone's starving, hold on, let me deal with that. Um, those pings on the map are where we are tracking, essentially, people, um, void clouds. And the void clouds we can now avoid without having to go into the system itself. Um, let's reactivate that power plant because the people there are unemployed, apparently. And I'll build a new hydroponics farm. I think Current did a pretty good job of overall looking at the geopolitical situation. Uh, I'm going to say again that for us, the Chabran Imperium and the Kraxros Star Principality going to war with each other is massively helpful. You've uh, just uh, in, Ben. Uh, yeah, yeah. The subterranean aliens of New Mexico have emerged on the surface. <laughs> That's some pretty serious breaking news there. <laughs> and what, did, what the balls are you going to do about that, eh? We're going to make the galaxy great again. I don't know really what we're going to do about that. We're going to have to think. Oh. And the Go on. Is dead. Go on. Construction complete. I'm finally going to clear out the Stratal system, I hope. We found a crater impact on one of the planets, so let's research that as well. Right, uh, I really do have to wrap this up because uh, that's another episode in the bag. But, in closing, um, this conflict over here is going to be particularly interesting for us. Um, neither of these parties like us, pretty much. They're sandwiched between two of our uh, allies and our biggest ally in, uh, in current. Um, the Yaks Kalok is very friendly to both of us as well. So what you're seeing is kind of like a, a power block forming here between four allies. Five if you count the Glur, although they're kind of out of it actually, because they're they're isolated from us by the fact that no direct hyperspace lane exists between uh, current space and theirs. Now uh, that lane will stay open if uh, the League of Terran Planets continues to take control of this cluster of stars to the side there. The Erasian Coalition began expanding and seemed to have stopped a little bit, although they've got the sort of this sort of penis coming off the back of their territory. Um, what is starting to worry me is the League of uh, Xenophobic Religious Fanatics over here, because uh, aside from being unpronounceable, they seem to be completely unchallenged in their area of space, and they are expanding fairly rapidly. Oh, go away. Anyway, thank you so very much for joining us again. I hope you guys are having an awesome week, and uh, it's goodbye from both of us. Goodbye. Bye-bye for now.